I know many of you wood turners, when you think of a lidded box, you tend to think of a cylinder box like, like this. And that's okay. I've turned a bunch of them and I'll turn a bunch more. Uh, but they can be so much more than that. So today we're going to stretch ourselves maybe a little bit in artistic design and turn a, we're going to turn a pedestal box. These tend to be a little bit, uh, little bit more elegant looking and, and can maybe push your artistic uh, design ability just a little bit. Before I uh, started wood turning, I didn't know anything about art and I don't know a lot about it now, but I've learned a lot in looking at other people's work and, and reading a, a, about it a, a bit. I've got a master's degree in business administration, not a master's degree in fine arts like some of the fine wood artists I know. but but uh, some of this can be uh, learned, and we can learn a lot by looking at other people's work and, and, and considering it and looking at some of our own work. I want to give this shout out to my friend Harvey Meyer, who brought in a, a pedestal uh, box to a recent club meeting for, uh, for show and tell, and that got me thinking. Before we mount the wood, we need to have some idea as to what our box will look like when we're finished. This guides us in our wood selection, both in species, color, and size. When you're working with a different shape, it doesn't hurt to sketch out your uh, ideas before you're turning on wood, such as uh, these little sketches here. I get a lot, of, a lot of ideas and inspiration from Pinterest. When I find a shape or project I like, I just pin into one of the several Pinterest boards for future reference. Here's part of my Pinterest board on wood turning boxes. Pedestal boxes predominate the first few entries because they are recent additions as I got to thinking about what kind of shape. I might like. Here's some examples of some shapes that I I turned. Uh, they are not actually hollowed. Uh, the lids, it's all one piece. And I spray painted them back, just uh, black, just to give me some feel for size and shape uh, of what I might like and how I might handle the, the finials. Another great reference uh, for images as well as other ideas on turning boxes is this a uh, book by my wood turning hero Richard Raffin on turning boxes. Uh, if you're interested in this book, by the way, you can get it on on Amazon by following the link in my description. Uh, I get a small commission and it helps support my channel. The one you'll see on uh, current, this is an older edition. The newer edition's got a colored uh, cover and's got uh, colored pictures. Otherwise, I think it's pretty much pretty much the same same book. And he's he's got several a uh, number of uh, series of of pictures, including uh, these on pedestal boxes as samples give you something to think about. You need to start with dry wood because as, as, as you learn pretty quickly as a wood turner, wood moves and if you want the lid to fit next season it needs to be dry to minimize that, that moving. Mount the uh, block, by the way we're using ornamental cherry, uh, mount it between centers and then we're going to turn it around. You don't have to have expensive tools. I'm using, still using an old uh, Harbor Freight uh, spindle roughing gouge. Anchor the tool, ride the bevel. As you begin to get round, reduce the gap and continue. By the way, this piece of wood is about uh, two and a half inches wide and twice as long, about five inches long. After you turn it round, you're going to put a, a chuck tenon on each side to fit your chuck. Then you can decide which end is going to be the lid. Uh, in most cases it's not going to make much difference. So let's go ahead and put it in, a, in the chuck and then we're going to part off the lid. Okay, I marked off a whole approximately a third for the, for the lid, including the recess. And I'm going to use a thin parting tool to part it off. I think before I part it off, I'm going to bring this lid down to give me some make it a little easier to mark uh, where it's going to fit into the body. I'm going to use an inset lid and uh, wood turners like pop fits but for this kind of box I think a lady would like to be able to lift it up with one hand without separating so we're going to make it just a bit, bit smaller. I'm going to take a peeling cut here. Go down maybe, maybe a little less than five millimeter. 
take a pencil and kind of mark. About where that's going to be. Now I can finish parting it off. Slowly lay it down this bit. Kind of fish tail it back and forth so it doesn't bind. Put it back out. Now, first thing we're going to do now, this is going to be the uh, inset lid. I probably shouldn't have taken off quite that much, but uh, we're going to hollow this out now. Okay, I've marked two lines here. Uh, I've marked where I think the uh, top of the, the box lid, uh, the rest of it's going to be finial. Then I came down about 3 30 seconds of an inch, and that's how deep I'm going to hollow. I'm going to use a half inch spindle gouge. Uh, cutting right on right on center. Speed, oh, somewhere around 1100, 1200. Anchor the tool. And I'm just going to drive, drive a hole in here. Now I'm going to start cutting it out. I, with this half-inch spindle gouge, that's the shallow fluted gouge, I've got it maybe at, oh, 10, 10.30 on the clock. 12 o'clock being straight up, 6 o'clock straight down, and uh, 9 o'clock straight toward me. I'm going to get a depth gauge just so I can monitor my progress. I'll keep that handy. we got all good half inch to go. That's a pretty smooth cut. I'm, I'm happy with that. Before I take it off, I've got to fin I've got to sand and finish the inside, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now off the lathe. Okay, I've sanded up to uh, 320 on the inside, wet sanded, and then used some uh, abrasive paste to polish it up. The inside probably not going to get any additional finish. Now I'm going to come just to the outside of that, that buffer between the inside and where the top of the lid is going to be. And I'm going to take a peeling cut and bring it down some and then start working on the lid, but we'll have to finish it uh, chucked up differently. I'm going to now I'm going to start shaping the lid and this lid is going to just about be even with the outside so I may have to uh, take this down just a little bit or put a bead on it so I'm going to go ahead and start taking this down
may be all I'm going to do for the for right now. Thickness doesn't feel too bad, but I can take it down some. Now it's time to chuck up uh, the bottom of the box. So we're going to take this out. Set it aside. Now, I've got to allow myself a little bit of room for the uh, clear the chuck jaw. So I'm going to go ahead and take a small parting cut there. Just to kind of mark it. Not enough to affect the integrity, but just... give my eye something to guide to. Now I've got to think a little bit about that uh, design. I think I'll, let's see, let me look at one. Uh, this is the one I'm kind of modeling after, so bottom, the pedestal tuck in here. There'll be a bead there. So, before we go any further, we're going to hollow, now that we know where the bottom bottom is, we're going to set our depth, depth gauge to be able to track that and the bottom is going to be here so when we spot check it this time I'm going to use a drill make it a little bit easier to hollow so we need to make us a guiding guiding beveled hole as we drill bit there we go that out of the way. I'll take that drill bit and look for a little marking on it and I see one right here. And you just ease that in. A bit short. There you go. Now like last time uh, we're going to hollow out from the center. Okay, now we've got this in the middle deep enough for the bottom of the recess. I'm going to go ahead and take a box scraper and uh, come down that wall and we'll start trial fitting the lid. So using the box scraper with a profile of a little bit less than uh, 90 inches here and sharpened on the front with about a 80, 70, 80 degree bevel, we're just going to come in here and we're going to keep that lid handy. Just do a little spot check here. Handle up just a little bit in the trailing position. We have this side come in parallel. Real close. We want this to be a snug fit so we can finish finish the uh, the bottom. So let's see if we can't find a green match and maybe it'll hold a little bit better. There we go. 